Thank you for watching the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. This is a Mark IV Churchill 75mm, either that or it's a Mark VI. You can get different people tell you different things. If you really want to know what I think, it's a Mark IV 75mm with a number of updates on it. There are differences, if you look at the stowage diagrams, you'll find that the Mark VI has fittings on it that uh, aren't on the Mark IV. But you can never be sure with a museum exhibit. Things can have fallen off or got lost in the meantime. Anything could have happened. So, in a way, we're, we're looking at two different tanks, although, of course, we're looking at one. Mark VI's were quite rare. They were basically Mark IVs with the 75mm gun with geared elevation fitted. A Mark IV 75mm was a Mark IV with the 75mm gun rather like the Mark III we looked at earlier, and therefore really more or less the same, except nine times out of ten, they had a manual elevation for the gun, which you did with the shoulder from inside, and they did make a bit of difference, but not enough to worry about. And from outside, you can't tell anyway, so don't worry about it. But things to look out for that, that make it a modern or an updated tank are the raised periscopes at the front here, the all-round vision cupola on top of the turret, things like that. They're signs that the tank has been updated over the years, probably for post-war service, but we can't be certain. We've actually painted it up for a Second World War vehicle. But this tank was outside for a long time, which probably explains why it's taken a bit of a beating from the weather and now looks a bit tatty. But it is a rare tank in its own right and worth looking at for that reason. Now on the side you can see it's up armoured. It's got about 20 millimetres of extra armour welded and bolted on down both sides. But this one also has the more modern type of air inlet on the sides and is much the same in that respect. The only real difference is that the tracks in this case are fully enclosed. The tin work comes out at the top and covers the track all the way along, which happened to all the later Churchills. But this can be one or the other, but in either case it's quite an interesting vehicle. And what it comes down to, again, is the installation of the 75mm gun. It fits into exactly the same cradle as the old six-pounder, which the tank was designed to take. It take, it's chambered a bit bigger to take the American 75mm Sherman ammunition and has a gun which has an armour piercing or a high explosive um, ability, which the earlier ones didn't have. They were more or less all armour piercing. So that in itself is a bit of an advantage. It means that the tank can take out another tank if it's lucky. Some took out Panthers and that sort of thing. Or it can take out anti-tank guns and infantry by firing high explosive at it. In fact, they used to usually go around with high explosive in the, um, the gun itself, ready to fire and loaded a bit of um, armour piercing if they needed it afterwards. But that's how the tank is arranged. Otherwise, it's basically a Churchill. It's powered by the same 350 horsepower 12 cylinder engine or and um, the Merritt Brown steering system at the back and the same suspension and the same tracks as the earlier models. So in that respect, it's, uh, it's more or less the same. It has the same doors in the side and the same crew of five. Is the machine guns, of course, are Beezers. You've got a coaxial one, again, to the left of the main armament in this case. In fact, it's the only place it can go. And there's one in the front of the hull here, which um, the co-driver's sort of mate uses to uh, machine gun anyone who gets in the way, basically. But that, that's the difference between the two types. So you could be looking at a Mark VI, in which case you're looking at the rarest of all the Churchills. If not, you're looking at a very late model of a Mark IV 75 mm with a certain amount of improvement added over the years. Now, while we're about it, 
and because we don't have them, I ought to mention the Mark V and the Mark VIII. The Mark V is basically a Churchill IV fitted with the 95mm close support howitzer. The Mark VIII is the Mark VII, the same as the Crocodile flamethrower tank, but fitted again with the close support howitzer. Now this 95mm gun is a very odd thing. It's got quite a limited elevation, which isn't much for a, a howitzer and certainly in a tank, but the, the gun is made up from the breech of a 25 pounder joined to the barrel of, or part of the barrel of a 3.7 inch AA gun and then firing 3.7 inch rounds of the old, the type that was done on the mountain howitzer, the famous screw gun. So that's how the, the gun was developed. Since we have one of the guns, we can show you one of those, but not the whole vehicle. In fact, to see a Mark 8 95 millimeter, you've got to go to Australia. And uh, although it's easier to get out there than it used to be, it's a bit of a way to go to see one tank. If you can support the museum, please think of backing us on Patreon or by buying items from our online shop. We have a fantastic selection of books, models, clothes and other gifts on the Tank Museum online shop. When you buy from our online shop, you are supporting the Tank Museum charity and that means we can carry on caring for our collection and producing this content. If you have supported us already, thank you very much. Subscribe and do keep watching.